Um, that, that, that's cool. So, L- Lionel and Elizabeth, where are they? I've got my, where, where are they? I haven't got my glasses on. But I just want to encourage you guys. You don't realize it at times, but you guys are so good at pulling the gold out of people. That, that we, we don't see the big thing because you're not up here doing stuff, but life's not about being up here. It's all about showing that love of Jesus out there. And you guys are so good at keeping in touch with certain people and just loving on them and encouraging on them and seeing the gold in them. And, and you don't even realize the time, but they don't see that within themselves. But whenever you phone them or you call to see them, whatever it might be, man, it just makes such a difference in their lives. So realize what you're doing is a blessing to God and a blessing to others and just continue to keep pulling that gold out in people. Amen? So, so bless you guys. So see the gold in people, all right? You with me? We still here? Okay. Anyone can find the dirt. Anyone can find the dirt. Seriously, it's easy to find the dirt on anybody. In fact, you want to find some dirt, just look in the mirror. <laughs> and we'll leave it there. But God has called us to find the gold. You know, when, you, when, when the guy's digging for gold, he doesn't run in, in, into the cave and he comes out, look, I found a rock. You know, he doesn't, you know, his boss, look what I found, I found some dirt. It's when you find the gold that you get excited. Amen. And uh, I just want to say this from the off start that, you know, 30 something years ago, 32 years ago, some people seen the gold in me that I didn't see. You know, I look at Pastor Norm. I look at who remembers Pastor Rodney Francis. Anybody remember Rodney? Um, man, these guys, I'd just be sitting there and they would just start to speak something in my life. And I remember thinking, Rodney said something about, you know, Trev, I, I really see a day where you're going to be the first fruits in this church. God's really going to use you, pastoral heart, and reaching out and encouraging and loving on all our people and stuff like that. And I'm sitting there thinking, can't be me. And right away as that thought came, he, he pointed, he said, it doesn't matter what you think. It's just true. And my face went bright red. <laughs> but I look back on it now, these things he spoke about, I look now on and I think that by the grace of God, I look at what God has taken and what God has done and what God is doing. Through, but he's seen the gold and I'm sitting there thinking, but you don't really know who I am. Because I'm only a Christian maybe six or nine months at the stage. You know, and I'm thinking, bro, you don't know who I am. You don't know where I've came from. But what I realize now, guys, it doesn't matter who I was or where I came from. When Jesus gets a hold of you, seriously, he turns you into something beautiful, something awesome. You are gold in the hands of God. You got to realize that. And gold is very special, isn't it? It's very precious. You're precious in the eyes of God. Now, let me, let me sit on this one too, guys, because I'm, I'm being intentional. I'm trying to be intentional each week when I'm sharing the Word, all right? I'm, I'm trying to, I really feel the Spirit of God is taking us somewhere. I really believe that um, re- the revival is going to come and the Spirit of God's going to break out. But I feel that within all that, we've got to keep our focus on Jesus. Keep our eyes upon Jesus. The Word came away before Christmas. Keep your eyes upon Jesus. What I'm saying is people who take their focus off Jesus and on the other stuff, we can miss what God's going to do. And we got to realize, guys, God has called us to make a big difference in our city, first of all. He, he's called us to love on people, to encourage people and help broken people be healed. Amen. And I just want to say this. Stats on the internet suggest that Facebook is the highest number of people fighting on it and they're Christians. So all of a sudden, come on with me, all of a sudden it's not okay to love somebody. All of a sudden it's okay to hate somebody. I'm going to tell you now, there's nowhere in Scripture that we are called to be hateful or spiteful or picking seriously. How can you say or how can I say I love God who I can't see, yet again, I don't love my brother who I do see. And all of them saying to this, guys, all of a sudden it's okay to dislike somebody because they're, they, they think different politically. Guys, some are labor, some are, it doesn't matter. Don't let that, politics is completely different than what the church is. We're called to love God and love people. We're called to pray for government, seriously. No, I don't like him. I've said this before and I say again. No, I don't like every single thing, but I'm going to tell you something. You're not perfect. I'm not perfect. And God's still on the throne. So what I'm saying is, the bottom line is this, guys, and, and I need to be straight up with this. Here's the good news. You want some good news? Our opinions 
do not quali qualify us to judge. Whoo! At least one person got it. No, but seriously, our opinions, it, it doesn't qualify you. to. There's one judge and you're going to face him one day. We all are. And thank God the great judge doesn't judge us. Does that make sense? Jesus couldn't be any plainer than what he was with the disciples when he said, don't judge. Look at the scripture, Matthew 7, 1 to 5. Do not judge or you will be judged. For it's the same way that you judge others, you will be judged. And with the measure that you use it, it will be measured to you. Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? Come on. Seriously, guys, I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to be cocking anything else. Man, God's dealing with me on this stuff. He hasn't changed. But God is stirring stuff and shaking stuff up over stuff that's been honest. Hey, look at your attitude. Come on, you gotta. And, and I'm gonna be honest, I've been repenting and asking God for forgiveness. And I thank Him for His grace to do that. Does that make sense? But I, I know I've looked at some people and thought, how can they do that? What do they think they're doing? And it's a speck, but there's a plank. A plank's a lot bigger than what a speck is, eh? You probably need a million specks to make a plank. You ever think about it? But how can you say to your brother, let me take a speck out of your eye when all the time there's a plank in your own eye? You hypocrite. Guys, I've said this before. The hypocrite word there means it's to put on a mask. It's to put on a false face. It's to pretend to be somebody that you're not. We don't need to be pretend to be anybody. You don't need to be me or someone else. Be yourself, but be honest and be loving and be kind. And where you struggle, ask God for grace in those areas. Because the bottom line is, God so loved the world that he gave everything. That hasn't changed. You still with me? It's quiet, but it's good. You know, sometimes I can look out and somebody's doing this. <laughs> when I'm preaching, you know, and I can be, and I can miss it, but I can miss it. What's your problem? <laughs> the thing is, they're just doing this because they're here for the first or second time and they're thinking, what is he saying? <laughs> <laughs> but I've been caught, seriously. They don't like the message, you know. And here's the good thing. Here, I'm just being honest. And, but I'm able to go and say, Lord, that was wrong. Seriously, come on, guys, this is your pastor. Lord, that was wrong. My attitude was wrong. Because I have a coffee with him. And I have the coffee saying, I'm, I'm trying to work out what you're saying. <laughs> so I caught on what was happening. Does that make sense? You know, <clears throat> there's a story about this Texan pastor, pastor from Texas. And he has this missionary who, who comes to his church to preach. And the missionary, he, he had a church in Cambodia. And when he arrives in Texas in the church, he's got a, a blue silk, light blue silk suit on. Um, unfortunately, when he's speaking, he's got a really high voice. <laughs> so all the church were only joking. He dribbles a bit. Seriously, this it's true. So after the service, I mean, the, the, the pastor from Texas was really, he was a bit upset. So after the service, he speaks to the guy and says, listen, you need to get a grip of yourself. He said, you come here with a flash, light blue suit on, silk suit. You're um, a high-pitched voice. Um, you need to be more manly when you speak. And he says, and that thing about, you know, dribbling, he said, um, like it's, it's just really off-putting. And the guy looks at him and he says, I'm really sorry. He says, but what you got to realize, this suit I'm wearing, number one is, it was made from the silkworms in Cambodia. The people made it as a gift. He said, you got to realize we had our own church, but there was an uprising. And what happened was the church was burnt down. And what happened was when I was trying to get away, a soldier stood on my neck and it, it, it wrecked my focal cords. And that's why I dribble. You know what? That pastor apparently was found later that afternoon, the Texan pastor on his knees down below the church. I don't know what way it felt, but they had like a cellar where there was coal, where they would light the fire and everything. The guy was repenting from his attitude of judging the wee skinny missionary. 
And what I'm saying is, guys, we can't go on by what we see. God has called us to not to be judgmental, but to love one another. You know, I remember speaking to Scotty a few years ago, and you can have a coffee with him afterwards and if I'm wrong and he can correct this, but I remember that these guys, they feed the streeties. So as a fellowship, we've, we, we've done this for years. We've, we've fed people who live on the streets. And um, there was one guy in particular, and Scotty said, Trev, you wouldn't believe it, but this guy was a school teacher and he was, a, he was very gifted with playing instruments and stuff, but his wife passed away or something. He struggled. And he started to get into some substance to bring healing. And he couldn't live at home any longer. And he decided to go and live on the street. Guy had a beautiful heart, but he was broken. But it's so easy to judge people and think, ah, they, you know, they don't go and get a job and they don't do this. Other. Hey, guys, God loves them. God loves this. We got to get by this thing. And, and, and you're good at this. It's not just about us. You, you, you know what I mean? Can, can you hear my heart on this one? We're not called. It's so easy to look and to judge. And here's what I want to say. God's glory is that he doesn't judge us when he could. And he is aware of our motives. You see, guys, you don't know my motives. Nobody but God knows the motives of somebody's heart. So don't even, seriously, that's what the Word of God says. Only God knows the motives of the heart. And I'm going to tell you something straight up. Sometimes my motives weren't very good. And God nailed me for it. But thank God he gave me the grace also to repent from it and to ask for forgiveness. And that meant sometimes going to some people and saying, hey, I'm really sorry because this, this is what I've done. I'm not saying that to be a hero. I'm saying that what you need to realize is, guys, God's grace is amazing. God's mercy is amazing. God is the only one that knows. You know, Moses made this comment. Remember, Lord, I want to see your glory. I just think the glory is just that God's going to turn up, big bright light, everybody will fall down, get healed, all that stuff. Amazing thing is this, guys. God said, I'm going to turn up. So what Moses was saying is, I want to see your character. Do you know what he's seen, guys? When he passed by, he only seen the side of him. He seen a God full of compassion and mercy and love and forgiveness. That's what he's seen. And that's what I'm saying about when you see God's glory on our lives. You know, God doesn't judge us. He loves us. And he wants us to love one another and to care about one another. Amen. In Psalm 103, 7 and 8, it says, He made his ways known to Moses. He was a God of compassion, grace, slow to anger, and abounding in love. Wow, how cool is that? You know, there's another passage coming up of Scripture, and it's um, Jesus, when he's with the woman who was committing adultery, the religious one bring him, Jesus returned to the Mount of Olives, but early the next morning, he was back again at the temple, a crown should gather the crowd, and he sat down and taught them. As he was speaking, the teachers of religious law and the Pharisees brought a woman who'd been caught in the act of adultery. They put her in front of the crowd. Teacher, they said, Jesus, this woman was caught in adultery. The law of Moses says to stone her. What do you say? They were trying to trap him into saying something they could use against him. But Jesus stooped down and wrote uh, in the dust with his finger, they kept demanding an answer, so he stood up again and said, all right, but let the one who never sinned throw the first stone. Then he stooped down again, wrote on the dust. When his accusers heard this, they slipped away one by one, beginning with the oldest until only Jesus was left in the middle of the crowd with the woman. Then Jesus stood up again and said to the woman, where are your accusers? Didn't even one of them condemn you? Condemn you? No, Lord, she said. And Jesus said, neither do I. Go and sin no more. Stick with me in this one, guys. What you're actually seeing happening here is grace and truth and action together. You see, the Bible says that by Moses came the law, John chapter one, but by Jesus came grace and truth. Can you see what happened here, guys? He wasn't telling her what you're doing is right, but he said, I'm not condemning you. Go and sin no more. Can I tell you something? Probably the reason why they all walked away one after the other. Maybe, maybe they'd slept with that woman at some time as well. Maybe they didn't. But let them without sin cast the first stone. Not one of them could cast a stone. 
Jesus wasn't agreeing with her lifestyle because he said to her, don't carry on this way. But he tells her, hey, I'm not condemning you. Come on, guys. Lots of us were there. And he forgives us and he gives us a grace to be free from that stuff. But we've got to remember, you know, he didn't judge us. It's not our role to judge anyone. Are you still with me? Yep. Okay. Because here's what I want to say. Christians are known for taking the high ground and, and moral standards. Yep. Here's the challenge. Let's be known for taking the high ground in mercy. Seriously, let's be known purposefully. Purposefully. And that, that means it's not a works, but you've got to work at this with the grace of God. Come on, let's be known. Wow, them Christians are merciful. They're loving and they're caring. Yeah, they're not agreeing with me with some of the things I do or whatever, but they still love me and they're merciful. And you know what, guys? When you're merciful towards somebody, you'll pray for them. I know too many people that don't want to pray for people that just want to complain about them. Don't complain about your pastor. Pray for him. <laughs> I'm serious. I'm not perfect. I know that. Far from it. Every day I need God's grace just the same as you do. And every day I go, oh Lord, I got that wrong, please. Forgive me. But we can forget those things at times and we get on our high horse and jump after all this other stuff. If we keep it simple and do these things, God can trust us. They bring people alongside you. Hey, come on. Somebody there. In, in Luke 6.36 it says, Be merciful just as your Father in heaven is merciful. Um, Micah, is it up? Act justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with your God. Guys, that's what God has called us to do. Yeah. That's it. If you don't like it, take it to God. That's a pretty cool scripture, isn't it? Guilty people judge themselves anyway. Before I got saved, I knew I was a bad wee blurt. And blurt is a lovely word in Irish. <laughs> I hope. I haven't heard that word for a while, so don't look it up in the dictionary. But I knew I wasn't the best egg in the box. I knew that. I didn't need the people to tell me I'd done stuff wrong. I actually knew. Come with me, guys. Seriously, I actually knew that. I already felt shame. Lots of people believe that God doesn't even like them, let alone love them. So if we get beside people who are expecting to be rejected and we love on them and show them mercy, all of a sudden, they start to open up and God can start to do something in their lives. Is that, yeah? You agree with that? Seriously. They're expecting us to give them a mouthful. But when you love them and you care and you pray for them, God gets a hold of them. There's 200 of you. What happened to you? And if he can do it with you, he can do it again. Yeah. Somebody had been praying for us. I know Jesus is a great intercessor, but I'm telling you, somebody asked me the other day, Pastor, who in your family was praying for you? I said, I don't think anybody was because I can't remember anybody had faith in my family. I said, but I know for a fact there had to be at least one or two women who lived in the same village that I did and looked and thought, oh, he's a little rascal, that wee old fella, he needs prayer. <laughs> and, and they probably, seriously, and, and, and they'd been praying for me. And I know the greatest person of all who was interceding for me, I know Jesus was, but there's been somebody praying for me. Let's pray them into the kingdom. Amen. You still with me? Okay, so people expecting rejection, they're shocked when we love them and it changes their hearts and can also change their view of God. Mercy accepts people regardless of their behavior. Is that good? It's up here. In an atmosphere of love, people feel secure to admit that they're wrong, which can lead them to wanting to leave their past life and change. I know that through experience, personal you know, because certain people who loved on me when I was just a Christian at the start, um, through time I started to feel I didn't have the wall up the same and I started to be a bit honest. Hey, bro, I'm struggling in this area or something here. What do you think? Because I knew they loved me and they wouldn't put me down. And they gave me some of the best advice ever yeah. that helped me to go to God with it and to be free. Let me tell you this too. If you think things is just a quick fix, most things aren't. 
Yeah, you can come up in front and get prayed for and get delivered or something. I, I get that. But what I have found is it's usually a process. The process takes time, but it leads to a suddenly when you put things in place. Does that make sense? All right. So with this, I want to say, last Sunday, not mention names, but there was a young man here who struggles with addictions, right? Um, and I'm only saying this, and the fact is, because this kid felt loved, number one, he came here. He's struggling big time. Somebody came and told me about him. He was out in the car park, ready to go home. And I went, I went just to see him and say, hi, good to see you. And they ended up putting my arms around him. And I looked him straight in the eyes. I said, you know what, man? You're always welcome here. You're special. God loves you. He hasn't given up on you. Now, let me tell you, no, I didn't say let go of that stuff. He knows he needs to let go off it at a certain time. I got to let God deal with that, right? But I seriously, I just had love for this boy. And I gave him a hug and just stood back. I looked and the tears were rolling down his face. Now, I'm not saying that for me. Wow, look how good our pastor is. It's nothing to do with that. It wouldn't have mattered who it was done that. I told him who he really is. I pulled the gold out in him. And I said, bro, the door is always open in this church for you. And now I'm praying for him because, I, to be honest, I'd forgot all about him. And I remember this boy from here when we came here all them years ago, from Gisborne. He was only a toddler. And he started to relate back to me. Pastor Trevor, I remember you came to our house. And you and dad were really great friends. And we done that. He started to relate all the stuff back. You know, he, his life still is messed up at the minute. But Jesus can turn that around. But does that make sense? So I got to have mercy and grace. You got to see this. I know the religious ones would be really quick. Bro, if you weren't doing that, not that, you'd be fine. Yeah, I know that. But I don't know what it's like to be addicted to that stuff. I know what it used to be like to be addicted to cigarettes. Huh. Smoked since I was 10 years of age until I was 33. Lied to lots of people in the church at times that would give up. And they hadn't. They couldn't wait to get from church to get a fag. You know, told a story one night. We come back from church. I said to Debbie, honey, you look really tired. You need to go to bed. It's about 8.30 at night. Because <laughs> I had a butt. I had nicked one. I was smoking a cigarette and I smoked half of it and I nicked it and I kept it for the Sunday night. <laughs> so she's in bed and I'm out. I'm out having to smoke out the back. Seriously. This wee butt. Oh, I remember it as well because, yeah, the flesh was loving it. Okay. Something told me you're going to get caught. <laughs> Seriously. I got I to gotta think it was God. You're going to get caught. But anyway, I was enjoying it so much, it kept smoking. The next minute I heard this thing, and what do you think you're doing? And what happened was, the cigarette stuck to my lip. Seriously. So I tried to pull it out, and it didn't come out. My fingers came along, and all the red hot ice. It was it. And I, and I actually... Took a bit of skin off my lip. So here's my way out of it. None of your business. You should be in bed. <laughs> Get back. But I'm only sharing with you guys. What I'm saying is here, this is me being honest. I didn't want to lay that down on the altar. I, I was still enjoying it at a time. Thank God I haven't touched a cigarette now probably for 30 years. Close to 30 years. By the grace of God, right? It wasn't easy. It was a process, but... Laying it down and letting the grace of God come into your life. There came a time all of a sudden when that desire was gone. But what I'm saying is, it didn't just happen. Some of you might have been lucky, smoked 40 a day, gave your life to Jesus on a Sunday night and never felt like a cigarette again. I've heard that at times as well. I get that. But the majority of times when we've got stuff in her, you know, it takes time. Ha, ha, ha. Finishing. People need, I've said this before, people need to feel that they belong before they believe, before they behave, before they become. How the heck can you behave when you haven't got the Spirit of God in you? You know, the old way was, if your behavior is good, I'll make you feel that you belong. You know, part of something. Man, if that had been the case, nobody would have been my friend. My behavior was terrible. But it was that, no, 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 you belong. You see, you feel that you belong. Let God speak to their hearts. Because here's the thing. Once they believe, the Spirit of God comes in 
He transforms you, not the pastor, not the elder, not Mrs. Big Gub sitting beside you, or Big Mouth Mr. Mom, whatever it is, just to keep it balanced. Jesus does it. But people need to feel loved. Yes? There's a photograph. Got a photograph, Sander? See this? Do you know what that is? Nobody know. Just be honest, you don't know. Do you know? So I know something that you don't. That's a first in a lifetime. <laughs> what that is, is guys, you notice it's a cemetery. Wall, cemetery to the other side. It's a husband and wife. One was a Catholic, one was a Protestant. They were married for 40 years. But because of whatever you called it, they wouldn't bury them in the same graveyard. It's true. So what they decided to do was they got buried close to the wall on each side and they put out, because that's two hands shaking. That's pretty cool, isn't it? What I want to say is this, guys, this is another story. I heard a story of, of two soldiers turning up to a church. And it wouldn't matter whether it's Catholic or Protestant, but it was Catholic at the time. There was a soldier there, the dead body, and he said, listen, he fell in war. He wants to be buried in the church grounds. And the priest turned around and said, we're sorry, but we can't bury him in the church grounds because he's a prod. Only can't. This is a true story. So what the guys done was they left with the body. They got close to the wall of the church and they dug a grave. And they buried the body in the grave, right? And they come back in the next day before they were leaving to whatever, to say goodbye, prayers, whatever. And they couldn't find the grave. They couldn't find it. So they went to the priest and they said, listen, we can't find the, the grave. The priest said, no, because what happened was when you left, we got convicted. And what we decided to do was move the wall. They extended the wall, yes. Which means, guys, we got to let walls come down. We got to be open to extending the walls of love and compassion and grace and mercy within our hearts. Isn't that cool? He got convicted and stuff the religion. It's about people. Through breaking down our walls, we expand our boundaries and we can include rejected people into our world. Jesus visited all people. He invited all people into his world. You know, I'm going to be honest, and this is me too. I mean, guys, we're on a journey with God. It's a process, right? So I don't want to leave in here thinking, oh, well, you know, I see that one thing. You're lucky if it's one thing. I probably get four or five things that God's working with, all right? And for the person who thought it was one thing, you'll have four or five as well, but I'm just being nice. But the thing is, we're all, we, we can all be uh, pre-justice at times. You with me? You know, mention the word teleevangelism. Mention the word lawyer. Ha! Some people are laughing. Because you know why? Hey, car salesman. <laughs> Seriously, I mean, you're laughing, but it's a fact. You know, tax collector. Labor. Government. National government. Seriously. Gay. Banker. Ex-prisoner. Person lives on the street. Now, I, I, I know for a fact that some stuff would have popped in your heart. That's good. Give it to God. We need to not play Christian. We need not to play church. Guys, we need to realize how awesome the grace of God is on our lives. <sighs> Seriously, we need to realize that. And if we can realize that, and be yourself. Be yourself knowing that each and every day you need God's grace and God's mercy. Seriously. What a difference that will make in our lives because we're not trying to pretend. You know, you're not fighting with a wife coming down the motorway and then when you get to church, hey, pastor, I do everything. You know, you can have that fight down the motorway and then be honest and say, you know, honey, I'm wrong. Sorry, forgive me for that because that happens. Any of you ever find you fall out coming to church? Especially when you had kids years ago too. Blame the kids, but really. But you know what I'm saying. Let's move on from that. All of us have opinions about one thing or another that we need to overcome. And we can overcome this by the grace of God. It doesn't matter what happened. He's, honestly, guys, it doesn't matter what. God wants you to be free. You know, when I'm doing this message, I said, finish it on Friday. I don't believe this. I'm just almost finished. 
I don't go on the social media. I get addicted to that stuff sometimes. I get, I should do it less, just being honest. But I had a look and somebody's photograph popped up. And I thought, flipping old religious rat bag. Seriously. <laughs> of somebody who used to come to church years ago. And he, but because we had a bit of a thing, that was wrong. I said, Lord, I'm sorry, forgive me. But he showed me how subtle it can be. But seriously, I'm finishing the message. And this thing popped up. I haven't seen this guy's face for years. But the very first thing that hit my heart was, he's religious. And I thought, Lord, I'm sorry. Maybe he is, but that doesn't give me the right to have that type of attitude. I asked, I repented, and I asked God for forgiveness. I said, Lord, if I see his face again, please help me not to feel that way. And if I run, in, run into him, help me to give him a hug. And not a, not a Judas hug, but a, but a hug. We don't have to be the best friends, but I still got to love him. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Okay, let's choose. Not to be fault finders, dirt finders, but to be people who find the golden people. John 13, 34, I don't care if you get sick of hearing it. On my deathbed, I hope by the grace of God I can do this. And you commandment I give to you, that you love one another just as I've loved you, so you also will love one another. Lord, I pray as a fellowship, I thank you that there is no condemnation for those in Christ Jesus. But Lord, I pray as a congregation, we're not any better than anybody else. We've got warts, everything else. But Lord, we ask for your grace to help us to forgive and release those who have hurt us, those who have offended us, Lord. And Father, we pray that, and we thank you for your grace each and every day. And we pray, Lord, we could become the people you have called us to be, that we could see the gold in each other, that we can encourage each other, inspire each other, Lord, on our journey with you. And I pray, Lord, that you would get the glory, you would get the honor. I pray, Lord, as we put these things to practice, doesn't mean we got to agree in every single thing, but as we put these things to practice, that you would draw people by your spirit. And Lord, that we would be fishers of men and women, um, people who have been broken, who have been hurt, who are afraid, would no longer be afraid to come in these doors or come into our lives because they would know that we do care about them. And Lord, that those who are lost would be found. Uh, Jesus, we thank you that you did demonstrate your love 100%, that while we deserve to be judged, you give your life so that we wouldn't be judged. You took our judgment, our punishment upon yourself on the cross. So Lord, I thank you that you're the one who empowers us by your grace, by your mercy, to be able to do these things in Jesus' mighty name. And everyone who loved the Lord said, amen. amen. One altar call, I think my wife's coming up in a moment, is she here? Um, do you want to do another call? Okay. See, we love each other. <laughs> On stage, I'm only joking. We really do love each other, believe me, we do. Um, I don't want to lose a moment. Um, Alter call, salvation, yeah, yeah, yeah. Jesus takes you as you are. You may be sitting here with warts or your, your brokenness or stuff that's happened in your life from years ago, I don't know. But you need to realize Jesus will accept you where you're at if you will call upon him. And I just want to give an opportunity, if you've never asked Jesus in your heart before, um, some of you might be watching on TV, whatever it might be, in your homes, I know, but maybe you're upstairs, I can't see you fully, but if it's you and, you, and all of them saying this, look, I'm not going to big ring rule, Jesus is the best thing that's ever happened to us. Well, the fact is, he's alive. The tomb's empty. He's alive, and when we ask him in their life, his spirit has come into our life, and, and, and now we're born again. That's what it's all about. So I had to acknowledge I'm a drunkard, I'm a loser, I'm a cheater, I'm a liar, I'm a thief. Jesus, come and help me. And that was 32 years ago, and he came, and he's still working on my life. And because of him, I've got eternal life. Because of him, I've been forgiven. Maybe you're here today, and you would like to ask Jesus in your heart. If that's you, can you put your hand up? Anyone? I'm looking across the auditorium. Anyone here? 
Maybe you walk with Jesus and you backslid and you went and done your own thing. Some people have done that, lots. Hey, he still will accept you where you're at. Is that you, anyone here today? And you want to invite Jesus back into your heart? Okay. One, God bless you, bro. Anyone else? Hey, let's give the Lord a clap. Two, two people. Two. Just say this prayer quickly. Lord Jesus, I turn away from my sin and I turn back to you. Come into my heart. Lead and guide me by your spirit and give me the grace to be the person you've called me to be in Jesus' name. And Lord, help me also to see the gold in other people, to encourage them, to love them and inspire them in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you guys.